Hello and welcome back to Megzone. Today we shall be starting with this portion of measurement and metrology as this portion is very highly demanded on our channel. Many of our subscribers and viewers have been demanding for this uh, lecture from past I suppose two weeks to three weeks. So today we will be starting with the first portion of measurement met and metrology that is limits, fits and tolerances. And this lecture is going to be about one and a half hours. So I will try to cover almost each and every aspect of limits, fits and tolerances in just one lecture. And I request you to kindly follow it very properly. And before starting this lecture, I would simply like to request you that if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, kindly do it and also press the bell icon so that all the important updates that are given on the channel are notified to you as soon as possible. So the first I would like to discuss what will be the contents of this lecture. We have limits, fits and tolerances. Then we have inspection and types of inspection. So these are going to be the contents for this lecture. Now the first question arises, what is the actual need of metrology? And what actually is metrology? So if we look at metrology is actually concerned with the measurement portion. It is concerned with the science of measurement. Now, uh, why we have to study a separate subject like metrology, although we have so many numerous amount of techniques for measurement. Now, the simple and the short answer for why we are going for metrology or why we are going for an additional subject or additional branch so like metrology is simple because measuring uh, sorry a production of a component can be done but producing that component to the ultimate accurate level is very very difficult in the industry now it may be because of the human error because of the environmental error or because of the machine error or any new reason can be there so metrology actually focuses on very accurate and precise measurements okay so whatever product which has to be produced in the industry it should be very precise and very accurate so that it may have a very high market value and also establishes a good name of the manufacturer so this is the reason why we are going for metrology and we see that no two parts which are produced in the industry are identical. The probability that both the parts will be identical is never 100%. It is simply because there may be certain errors or there may be certain deviations as per the operator or the machine or there will be some environmental errors because of which the parts which are being manufactured will not be same either in some of the form like dimension, uh, surface morphology or something like that. And in any production process, regardless of how well it is designed or how carefully we are op performing an operation, certain amount of natural variability is always existing. For example, we have to produce a steel scale of dimension one meter. So it is probable that it may go up to 99.99 meter uh, centimeter or it may go up to 101.96 centimeter also. So variability is always there. It may be because of the natural reasons or maybe because of the errors that may pertain in the production system. Now the natural variations are random in nature and are cumulative effect of many small essentially uncontrollable causes. Now the uncontrollable causes can be simply uh, as I have already told you the human error or the machine error or the operator error or the environmental error that is the change in the temperature and pressure may also lead to the variation in the sizes of the products or the dimensions of these products okay and variability arises from the improperly adjusted machines operator tool wear or defective raw material as i have already told you that there is certain amount of tool wear as the tool is uh, used progressively over the time so it will not produce exact same dimension of the product every time because the tool is continuously eroding and it will not have that same surface finish or same specifications every time it is being taken into consideration okay so this the uh, reason simply indicates that man material machine are the main reasons why we are heading for metrology or a separate science of measurement okay now we come to the different terminologies and the first terminology that we have to study is the nominal size 
the nominal size is simply the size of a part which is specified in the drawing or it is used for the general identification purpose that is called as the nominal size now what about the basic size it is the size of a part to which all the limits of variation are applied and these limits of variation are simply called as tolerances okay and the basic dimension is actually the theoretical dimension and it is the basic size now for the actual size uh, and this basic size is also called as the ideal size okay now for the actual size the difference between the basic size and the actual size should not exceed a certain limit otherwise it will definitely going to be interfere with the interchangeability or while mating of the two parts which are produced in the industry and it is the actual measured dimension of the part so it is called as the actual size now we come to the limit of sizes the limit of sizes are actually the two extreme permissible sizes for a given dimension or the part and uh, this dimension or the permissible or extreme permissible dimensions can be classified into two main categories the first category is called as the largest permissible size and the second category is called as the smallest permissible size the largest permissible size is called as the upper limit and the smallest permissible size is called as the lower limit or the minimum limit okay and tolerance uh, we'll be talking about tolerance in the next slides but i'll tell you tolerance is actually the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit see this is the diagram for a hole and for hole this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit and the difference between the lower and the upper limit is actually the tolerance and similarly the tolerance is given for the shaft okay and tolerance can be simply called as the maximum permissible variation which is allowed in the dimension okay and we will be classifying this tolerance in the next slides so talking on next that what is the actual relationship between the manufacturing cost and the work tolerance now we see that if the work tolerance required is very low that is we have to maintain very high degree of accuracy then corresponding to that the manufacturing cost would be very very high and it will definitely shoot up to a by very high level and if the work tolerance increases the manufacturing cost is decreases okay matlab jab hame bahut bahut zyada accuracy chahiye to hamara manufacturing cost bahut zyada ho jayega aur jab hamara tolerance kafi bad jayega matlab kafi variation hum la sakte hain apne size mein to definitely hamari manufacturing cost decrease ho jayegi so this is actually inverse proportion graph on the xy plot and inverse proportion graphs are generally uh, hyperbolas in nature and direct proportion graphs are straight line on the xy plot and it is very pertinent to relate the production of components within the specified tolerance zone to its associated manufacturing cost which has been given in this graph now as the permissive tolerance goes on decreasing the manufacturing cost incurred to achieve it will go on increasing exponentially okay as the tolerance is decrease matlab bahut zyada hame accuracy chahiye okay so there is an inverse relation between the manufacturing cost and the work tolerance and there is an exponential decay graph okay that means if the tolerance is increased but the tolerance should be increased in such a manner so that the original functionality of the component which is being produced should not be degraded to a very low level okay tolerance hame dena hai par itna zyada nahi ki hamara jo uski functionality hai ya uska original function hai wo degrade kar jaye ठीक है क्योंकि कॉस्ट घटाने के चक्कर में पता चला हम लोग टॉलरेंस को बढ़ाते गए तो हमारा जो ओरिजिनल फंक्शनैलिटी है या उसके ओरिजिनल फंक्शंस हैं वो डिग्रेड कर जाए ऐसा नहीं करना है तो ये ग्राफ भी अपने आप में काफ़ी इंपॉर्टेंट है और एक नंबर का यहाँ से हमें ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन पूछा जा सकता है नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज डेविएशन एंड द डेविएशन इज एक्चुअली द एल्जेब्राइक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द एनी गिवन साइज एंड एक्चुअल साइज and in deviation we have an actual deviation and actual deviation is actually the difference between the actual size and the basic size so deviation can be simply calculated by subtracting the actual size and the basic size and we should always remember that deviation is always closest to the basic size that is the fundamental deviation 
and all deviation all types of deviation can be positive they can be negative or they can be zero but lower limit upper limit basic size and tolerances are always positive they are never zero so this is a very important point that has to be noted here that lower limit upper limit basic size and tolerances are always positive in nature they are never zero but the deviation can be either positive it can be a negative one or it can be a zero deviation zero deviation means it there is no variability in the production so lower deviation simply refers to the algebraic difference between the minimum limit of the size and the basic size so basic size minus the lower limit is called as the lower deviation and basic size minus the upper limit is called as the simply upper deviation next we come to the zero line and the zero line is corresponding to that horizontal uh, level or datum from where these deviations are measured either we are getting the lower deviation or we are getting the upper deviation and all these upper or lower deviations are actually measured from this zero line so zero line is quite important because the deviations are being measured with reference to this zero line okay next we come to the important part and that is tolerance now tolerance i have already told you it is the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit and it is the maximum permissible variation which can be given in the dimension of any component so it is also defined as the permissible variation from the specified basic size of the part or rather we can say it is the maximum permissible variation now here we have been shown a shaft and a hole is also being shown for the hole we have been given the upper and the lower deviation and for the shaft also we have been given the upper and the lower deviation now the tolerance can be simply calculated by subtracting the upper limit and the lower limit upper limit is simply equals to uh, basic size plus the upper deviation and lower limit is equals to basic size plus or minus the lower deviation we can calculate simply by using the common sense or simply by the formula now the classification of tolerance this is important first classification is the unilateral tolerance second is the bilateral tolerance then we have the geometric tolerance and compound tolerance however 3 and 4 are not important so i'll not be discussing these 3 and 4 bus okay so i will not be discussing about the compound tolerance and the geometric tolerance rather i will be focusing mainly on the unilateral and the bilateral tolerance now first we will discuss about what is unilateral tolerance as we see the word uni stands for one so uni is actually the root word which is corresponding to one and bi is the root word which is corresponding to the word two okay so unilateral tolerance simply a uh, means that when both the maximum and the minimum limits are either above or below the basic size okay so in case of unilateral tolerance either we are having both plus that is both are plus both can be negative one can be positive other can be zero one can be negative and the other can be zero okay so only one side deviation is considered that is either both should be positive one should be positive and the other should be zero one should be negative other should also be negative and one should be negative and the other should be zero so this is called as unilateral tolerance okay now about the bilateral tolerance and for the bilateral tolerance as we can see that uh, okay first some points more about unilateral tolerance and in case of the unilateral tolerance one of the limits may coincide with the basic size also okay so it is possible that one of the limits are coinciding with the basic size and uh, now we come to the bilateral tolerance in case of the bilateral tolerance when the maximum limit is above and the minimum limit is below the basic size so here we can see that the maximum limit is actually above and the minimum limit is actually below the basic size for these two cases and this is called as the bilateral tolerance okay so bilateral tolerance and unilateral tolerance needs to be studied and they are only to be understood rest compound and geometric tolerances are not important 
and there was one question which was asked in the PSU and it was tolerance are specified and we have to complete the sentence the first option was to obtain the desired fits second option was because it is not possible to manufacture a size exactly third option to obtain higher accuracy fourth option to have proper allowances so the correct answer for that question was because it is not possible to manufacture a size exactly okay so if we look at this question or this example and we see the bilateral tolerance 40 plus minus 0 0.02 so basic size is given as 40 mm the upper limit would be 40 plus 0 0.02 and the lower limit would be 40 minus 0 0.02 and the tolerance can be simply calculated that is the upper limit minus the lower limit and here the upper limit would be 40 plus 0 0.02 and the lower limit is 40 minus 0 0.01 and we will subtract the upper limit and the lower limit and we can simply obtain the tolerance here so this was about the bilateral tolerance and here i have shown the unilateral tolerance that is one is zero other is negative both can be negative both can be positive one can be positive and the other can be zero so this is called as unilateral tolerance and here we are actually showing the bilateral tolerance where the maximum limit is above and the minimum limit is below the basic size so this is the way how we can identify whether we have been given a unilateral tolerance or whether we have been given a bilateral tolerance okay so now we here have a question where we have been given three parts a b and c and the corresponding length of LA, LB and LC have been given along with their deviations. For length A we have 30 mm and the lower is mi minus 0 0.01 and the upper is 0 0.02 that is in the plus. And we see that it is clearly a bilateral tolerance which has been given to us. Similarly for LB and for LC. Now, the overall length of the assembly will be the individual um, or summation of the lengths of the individual components that is LA plus LB plus LC 30 plus 20 plus 10. This is simply summation of the basic size. Now, what we will do is when we will consider the deviations that is the cumulative upper tolerances is 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 that is 0 0.06 uh, here if we see the upper tolerance is 0 0.02 0 0.02 and the lower ones or the cumulative lower limit will be this so therefore the dimension of the assembled length would be 60 plus 0 0.06 minus 0 0.03 mm so the entire length 60 can be sim uh, the entire length l can be simply written as 60 plus 0 0.06 and minus 0 0.03 mm and it is essential to avoid or minimize the cumulative effect of the tolerances build up as it will lead to high tolerance on overall length which is undesirable so this is our undesirable fact that our high tolerance overall length so this is to avoid our problems mein. okay now next we come to the tolerance designation and this is an important part where we simply have to remember this formula that is i is equals to 0 0.05 cube root of d plus 0 0.01 d okay where yehi hume yaad rakhna hai where capital d is equals to under root d1 d2 d1 and d2 are the nominal sizes which are marking the beginning and the end of range of sizes in mm okay so here only this formula needs to be remembered where i is the fundamental tolerance okay standard tolerance unit or the fundamental tolerance i is equals to 0 0.45 cube root of d plus 0 0.001 d where d is equals to under root d1 d2 and i must tell you that fundamental a question mein humse pucha gaya tha about the fundamental deviation and fundamental deviation is nothing but it is either the upper or the lower deviation whichever is nearest to the zero line either for the hole or the shaft matlab jo hamara fundamental deviation hai wo hamara ya to upper deviation ho sakta hai ya to lower deviation ho sakta hai lekin wahi hona chahiye jo hamara zero line ke sabse near hoga 
चाहे हमारा होल की बात हो रही हो चाहे हमारा शाफ्ट की बात हो रही हो एंड ये हमारे वैल्यू ऑफ टॉलरेंसेज हैं हाईवर कुछ के लिए हमें याद रखना पड़ता है और ज़्यादातर वैसे तो एग्जाम में दिया ही जाएगा तो मोस्ट कॉमन वन जो है वो आई हो गया सिक्सटीन और आई हो गया ट्वेंटी तो यही वाले जो है लाइक ट्वेंटी फाइव आई और सिक्सटीन आई यही हमारे याद रखने मतलब आप ये सिक्स सेवन एट और नाइन याद रख लीजिए बस इतना आप याद रख लीजिए बाकी तो आपको पेपर में दिया ही रहेगा कि व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द टॉलरेंस सो टेन सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी फाइव फोर्टी एंड सिक्सटी फोर ठीक है चार पांच वैल्यू हमें याद रख लेनी है सो दीज आर द वैल्यू ऑफ द टॉलरेंसेज और आई की वैल्यू तो हम अपने वहाँ फॉर्मले से लगा ही देंगे और उसको 25 से मल्टीप्लाई कर लेंगे या करस्पॉन्डिंगली 16 से या 40 से या फिर 64 से ना फॉर द फंडामेंटल डेविएशन आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट इट इज आई दी अपर डेविएशन और द लोअर डेविएशन विच इज नियरेस्ट टू द जीरो लाइन एंड ना वी विल सी दैट इफ इट इज रिटर्न इन द कैपिटल लेटर देन कैपिटल लेटर्स आर एक्चुअली फॉर होल्स एंड स्मॉल लेटर्स are actually used for shafts so shafts are designated by small letters and holes are designated by capital letters so from a to g that is if we look in the upper section from a up to g we have oversized holes okay and from p b to z we have undersized holes okay and for h we are having the zero deviation so for capital h we have deviation equals to zero a to g is representing oversized holes if it is given in capital and if it is given in small a to small g then it would be oversized shafts because small letters are actually used for shafts and capital letters are used for holes so if we look uh, letters m to c here yeah, letter small m where it is from small m uh, to zc it is representing the oversized shafts and from letters a to small g it is representing undersized shafts and capital is used for holes and small letter is used for shafts now if the designation has been given like this then what actually does it mean phi refers to 550 refers to the basic size that is the basic size is 50 capital h8 simply means 8 is the uh, it tolerance and h is simply reference uh, referring to the it is for होल टॉलरेंस ठीक है यहाँ पर होल टॉलरेंस जो है वो it8 के अकॉर्डिंग दिया गया है एंड f f is corresponding to the अंडर साइज शाफ्ट बिकॉज ए बी सी डी ई एफ जी तक जो था हमारा वो अंडर साइज शाफ्ट था एंड फॉर शाफ्ट द टॉलरेंस हैज बीन गिवन अकॉर्डिंग टू आई टी सेवन तो आई टी एट की वैल्यू क्या होती है आई टी सेवन में कितना ट्वेंटी फाइव आई है सिक्सटी नाइन जो भी मैंने आपको बताया था वो आपको याद रखना पड़ेगा ठीक है सो एच इज एक्चुअली रेफरिंग टू द फंडामेंटल डेविएशन बिकॉज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू कि जो हमारा ये वाला डेविएशन था एच H is actually this, and it is referring to the zero deviation. And small letter is for shaft, capital H is for holes. So, ये हमारा simple सा एक designation है which we have to remember. Okay, now we come to another important topic that is maximum metal condition. Now, say the dimension of a shaft is forty plus minus zero point zero five mm. Now, it we uh, from this example we can clearly say that it is a bilateral tolerance. Okay, so for if we have forty plus zero point zero five, then the upper dimension would be or the upper limit would be forty point zero five mm, and this is actually the highest possible or the maximum possible dimension. And corresponding to the maximum possible dimension, we will involve the large or the maximum amount of metal input. ठीक है तो डेफिनेट सी बात है यहाँ पर क्योंकि हमारा मेटल ज्यादा लगेगा तो यहाँ हमारी इकोनॉमिक्स डिस्टर्ब हो जाएगी मतलब इसका कॉस्ट ज्यादा हो जाएगा एंड द शाफ्ट विल हैव द लीस्ट पॉसिबल अमाउंट ऑफ मेटल फॉर द लोअर पोजीशन दैट इज 40 माइनस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एंड दिस इज थर्टी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन फाइव एम एम एंड दिस इज द लिमिट ऑफ शाफ्ट नोन एज द मिनिमम और द लीस्ट मेटल लिमिट एल एम एल और मैक्सिमम मेटल लिमिट इज कॉल्ड एज एम एम एल 
Similarly, considering a whole of dimension 45 plus minus 0 0.05, so the lower limit would be 45 minus 0 0.05 and the, the hole will have the maximum possible amount of metal at a lower limit. So, hole mein yaha par hamara opposite ho jata hai as compared to the shaft. So, hume yehi cheez yaha par ek important hai, jo yaad rakhni hai, ki shaft ke comparison mein hole ka jo case hai, wo ulta ho gaya. Yaha par lower limit hamari maximum metal condition dikhaegi aur lower, sorry, aha, lower limit jo hai, it is uh, subject, uh, it is showing you the maximum metal condition and the lower limit, sorry, and the higher limit is showing you the lower metal condition or lower metal limit. Okay, so higher limit हमें दिखा रही है lower metal limit और lower limit दिखा रही है maximum metal condition. ठीक है, तो बस हमें यहाँ से बस यही चीजें पता करनी थी और हमने यहाँ पर आराम से अपना ये चीज देखा कि हमारा जो hole है उसके case में shaft से just opposite हो जाता है. Okay, next topic that we have is interchangeability. Now interchangeability is a uh, important topic and interchangeability is simple but we have to understand that standardization process ko effectively apply karne ke liye, the concept of interchangeability was introduced so that whatever we are we can standardize kar sake. Hai? and our items mein variation hota hai, jo bhi dimension mein thoda bahut variation in the dimension and if they are within the certain limits, मतलब वो permissible limits में है, then हम किसी भी एक part को निकाल कर दूसरी जगह, दूसरी machine में भी use कर सकते हैं, ठीक है? And the equivalent size will be equivalently equally fit for operating in machines and mechanisms, and the meeting parts will be given the required fitting. तो मतलब उस part को हम आसानी से use कर लेंगे and this facility to select at random from a large number of parts from the assembly and results in a considerable saving of the cost मतलब दुबारा से हमें produce नहीं करना पड़ा but जो already भी हमारे पास part थे हमने simply उसी को replace करके use कर लिया and hence repairing भी इससे काफी हमारा easy हो जाती है so this was all about interchangeability now we come to another important topic and that is fits ठीक है so first of all what do we actually understand by fit okay so fit actually comes into play whenever there is an assembly condition between the hole and the shaft okay so what is hole hole is actually oh sorry what is hole hole is actually a feature which is engulfing a component जो कि आपने मतलब ये मान लीजिए this is actually representing a hole and it is engulfing this component so what is shaft? A shaft is being engulfed by the component which is called as hole. So it is possible that shaft may tightly fit into the hole or it is possible that shaft is being loosely fit into the hole or it is also possible that shaft does not fit in the hole at all. So it is simply referring to the degree of tightness or looseness between the two mating parts and here the mating parts are the hole and the shafts. Okay, so now we will study about some classification of the fits after this uh, slide and we see that manufactured parts required to be mated with one or the other during the assembly. Whenever the assembly has to be made, then these two parts needs to be mated. Okay, and uh, the relationship between the two mating parts are to be assembled. That is the hole in the shaft with respect to the difference in the dimensions before assembly is called as a fit. And an ideal fit is required for proper functioning of the mating parts. So, if our mating parts ke beech mein, jo mating process is definite or not done properly, then our function that we obtain or that we obtain are not done properly, we efficiency or accuracy. So, the fit is a very important role. Hota hai. The three basic types of fits can be identified depending upon the actual limits of the hole or shaft. Now, we shall be discussing about the different types of fits. Now, the first type of fit is the clearance fit. Okay, the first type of fit is called as the clearance fit. Clear simply means that after the assembly, some amount of space will be left between the hole and the shaft such that the shaft can easily reciprocate or even it can rotate also to us in some cases inside this hole. 
Now, clearance fit may be a side fit, easy sliding fit, running fit, slack running fit, and losing fit. And it is mainly provided for lubrication. Okay, so that the lubricant can be easily put or penetrated into this small space and it may reduce the friction between the hole and the shaft and hence the wearing and tearing of both the mating parts can be saved. So this diagram is representing the clearance fit and the clearance fit can also be the maximum clearance and the minimum clearance. Now the maximum clearance is simply equals to the upper limit of the hole and the lower limit of the shaft. Okay, this is corresponding to the lower limit of the shaft and this is corresponding to the upper limit of the hole. So this is actually corresponding to the maximum clearance. This is our lower limit of the shaft hai, and this is the upper limit of the hole. So the difference between these two will give us the maximum clearance. Now for the minimum clearance we have the lower limit of the hole and the upper limit of the shaft. The gap between the lower limit of hole and the upper limit of shaft will be called as the minimum clearance. So clearance or uh, clearance fit is actually provided so as to facilitate the property of lubrication so as to prevent any wear and tear between the meeting parts. Now second is the interference fit. Now interference fit is a type of fit which is found in heavy drive fit and light drive fit. Okay, and it is also called as the shrinking fit or simply the shrink fit. Now here we will see that in case when there is an assembly between the shaft and the hole, the dimensions of the shaft are going to be large, somehow larger as compared to the hole. So uh, this uh, fit that is interference fit comes into play. Okay, so now we see here that it, this is the example of the interference fit and the maximum interference that we has been achieved here is this one that is the lower limit of the hole minus the upper limit of the shaft. This is called as the maximum interference or maximum clearance and the minimum interference is the upper limit of the hole minus the lower limit of the shaft. So this is the lower limit of the shaft and the upper limit of the hole and the difference between these two is called as the minimum interference. So we have the maximum clearance and we have the maximum interference and all, we also had the minimum interference. Okay. So here the tolerances zone never meet but they crosses over each other. So here the tolerances zone are actually crossing over each other and they are never meeting. Okay. So this was all about the interference fit. Now next we have the transition fit and the transition fit simply refers to the overlapping of the tolerances zone. So tolerances zone here may be overlapping. Okay. And here we will have partial clearance and partial interference. That means it will not be completely a uh, uh, interference fit bhi nahi hoga or completely clearance fit bhi nahi hoga. It would somehow be lying between the clearance fit and the interference fits. So here I have drawn the diagram where I have classified the fits and exactly where they are used. That is clearance fit is used in slide, easy slide running, slack running and loose running. And transition is used in push or snug and ringing. Interference fit is used for force or press driving, tight shrink and freeze. Okay, next we come to the topic of allowance and allowance is actually referring to the minimum clearance which is given between the shaft and the hole. And the basic difference between allowance and clearance is that allowance is given intentionally whereas clearance is given unintentionally. Clearance could a jata hai whereas allowance hum apni taraf se dete hai. And allowance can be either positive or it can even be negative. So now in this diagram, we can see the allowance is between the shaft and the hole. This is the lower limit of the hole and this is the upper limit of the shaft. So this is actually corresponding to the minimum clearance is equal to the allowance. 
okay so allowance is also an important factor and i have already told you that it is the minimum clearance which is given between the shaft and the hole and one more important point that allowance is independent of the tolerance hamara jo allowance hai wo tolerance pe dependent nahi hota hai theek hai so next we come to what is the definition of grade deviation upper deviation lower deviation actual deviation and fundamental deviation actually i have already discussed these uh, definitions and i shall not be discussing them again i would simply come to next that is zero line we have shaft and hole and fit so zero line i have already told you that it is the line of zero deviation where the convention is to draw the line horizontally with positive deviations representing which are represented above the zero line and negative deviations are represented below the zero line and the zero line is representing the basic size of the component next is the shaft and the hole i have already told you what is the shaft a hole is the engulfing component shaft is the engulfed component and fit i have already told you it is the degree of tightness or looseness between the two meeting parts okay so this were these were the definitions that we have already discussed and here in this diagram i have discussed about what are the basic size upper deviation lower deviation so you can simply refer to this diagram now we come to the important point that is basis of limit system and under this we have two bases first is the whole basis system and for the whole basis system please remember just one single line and that is fundamental deviation of the whole will be zero okay so agar humne bol diya whole basis system to fundamental deviation of the whole would be zero and shaft basis system so fundamental deviation of the shaft will be zero sirf aur sirf hame yahi point yaad rakhna hai iske alawa hame isme koi bhi point nahi yaad rakhna okay so ये हो गया हमारा नेक्स्ट वीक कम टू द डिफरेंट लिमिट सिस्टम्स ये हमें पढ़ना नहीं है हमारे सिलेबस में भी नहीं है बस थोड़ा सा जानकारी के लिए मैंने डाल दिया था नेक्स्ट वीक कम टू इंस्पेक्शन एंड इंस्पेक्शन इज एक्चुअली द प्रोसेस व्हिच इज यूज फॉर कंट्रोलिंग एंड मॉनिटरिंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट विच इज बींग प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द मैनुफैक्चरिंग सिस्टम एंड ऑल्सो टू मेंटेन द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ प्रोडक्शन ठीक है तो ये होता है हमारा प्रोसेस ऑफ इंस्पेक्शन नाउ द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ द इंस्पेक्शन आर फर्स्ट इट सेपरेट्स द डिफेक्टिव कंपोनेंट्स फॉर द नॉन डिफेक्टिव कंपोनेंट्स नाउ एज वी ऑल नो दैट ड्यू टू द हाईली मैकेनाइज सिस्टम्स नाउ अडेज वी हैव रोबोटिक सिस्टम्स वेर दे आर सेग्रीगेटिंग द डिफेक्टिव एंड द नॉन डिफेक्टिव सिस्टम्स एंड द नॉन डिफेक्टिव सिस्टम्स आर एक्चुअली रिजेक्टेड और दे आर सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द एंटायर लॉट and they are either reprocessed or they are simply rejected whereas the non defective components are then processed further so a defective product is rejected before reaching to the customer because if the uh, defective product is reaching to the customer then it would definitely lead to the loss of goodwill or it will uh, be a stain to the name of the company it prevents the further work to be done on the defective product definitely if we are having a, some operations continuing on this uh defective product then we would input more amount of labor bhi usme jayega money bhi jayega aur time bhi jayega so definitely agar humne apne defective product ko pehle hi segregate kar liya so amount of money labor and uh, material will definitely be reduced it helps the company to sustain their reputation by maintaining quality standards definitely agar hamara quality product hamare customers ke paas pahunchega to it will definitely bring a very good name or and laurels to the company aur agar kharab product pahunch gaya to definitely we are not going to use it to find out the defects in the raw materials and errors in the workman ship this is also the function of inspection now functions of inspection i have tool inspection finished good inspection inspection of the incoming material inspection during the manufacturing to matlab jo hamara incoming material ya raw material aa raha hai usme hi koi fault na ho ya hamare manufacturing ke dauran koi fault na aaye ya hamara mechanical and metallurgical inspection like the surface morphology hum dekh le ki bahut zyada surface roughness na ho usme ya mechanical strength hum dekh le टूल इंस्पेक्शन जो हमारा टूल है जिससे हम वर्क ले रहे हैं वो बहुत ज़्यादा वीक ना हो या वो बहुत ज़्यादा 
मतलब डिग्रेड ना होने पाए और अगर वो डिग्रेड हो रहा है तो उसे टाइमली वी हैव टू चेंज इट फिनिश्ड गुड इंस्पेक्शन द गुड्स विच हैव बीन फाइनली प्रोड्यूस दे आर ऑल्सो इंस्पेक्टेड बिकॉज टू एंश्योर दैट दी इफ इवन बाई चांस इफ वन ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट्स बिकम्स और रिमेन्स डिफेक्टिव दैन दैट शुड नॉट डेफिनेटली रीच टू द कस्टमर so functions of inspection have already been discussed and i'll not simply discuss it again and again now the next is the types of inspection also you can simply read what are the different types of inspection that is also not important uh, based upon the location yes this is important that is centralized or crib inspection and floor inspection in case of floor inspection uh, kya hota hai ki product to product matlab har work station pe ja ke hum inspection karte hain and this actually requires a lot of large amount of time so this was all about the inspection now we come to the important part that is the limit gauges now in case of these limit gauges they are actually used for checking the upper and the lower limit okay so for checking the upper and the lower limit we are using these limit gauges the first one is the plug gauge and it is used to check the holes so first line itself is very important plug gauge is used to check the holes okay and snap gauge or ring gauge is used for the gauging of shaft so these two lines are very very important and we simply have to remember these two lines okay so plug gauge is used to check the holes and snap gauge or ring gauge is used to check the shafts okay so go simply means that it is having less dimension and it will simply go into the component not go simply refers to means it will not go so these are the different conditions corresponding to go and not go okay so uh this was about the plug gauge and the snap or the ring gauge so if we look at the plug gauge then the go plug is actually corresponding to the lower limit and it will easily enter and the not go plug is corresponding to the higher limit of the hole and hence it is not entering and snap gauge or the ring gauge is simply uh, this one and uh, uh, the go snap gauge is of the size corresponding to the higher maximum limit uh, while the not go is corresponding to the lower or the minimum metal condition so this was simply about the go and the not go so with this we come to the end of this lecture maine shuru mein bola tha shayad 1 hour and 1 and a half hour tak jayega lekin hamara pehle hi khatam ho gaya so i have tried to cover each and everything in this single chapter however if some topics are left i'll be covering that in the next chapter itself and we will have about one more lecture on metrology and that would be on the metrological measurements and measuring इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स सो आप हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर लीजिए और बेल आइकन को भी प्रेस कर लीजिए क्योंकि कोई भी अगर इंपॉर्टेंट अपडेट अपलोड किया जाता है तो आप उससे सबसे पहले नोटिफाई हो सकें एंड यू आर ईजली एबल टू एक्सेस ऑल द लेक्चर्स एब्सोल्यूटली फॉर फ्री यू डो नॉट हैव टू पे इवन अ सिंगल पेनी हाउ एवर इसमें एक टेलर्स प्रिंसिपल रह गया है एंड टेलर्स प्रिंसिपल इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड आई बी कवरिंग दैट टेलर्स प्रिंसिपल इन द नेक्स्ट chapter or in the next slide first and then i'll be going for the metrological measurements so thank you so much and all the best for your preparation